So I recorded that video on Gauss and quadrature a very long time ago. It was maybe midway through my uh, recording lectures for linear algebra. And ever since then, I've been looking forward to having an opportunity to actually explain how Gaussian quadrature works. So we finally get that opportunity, and it's very exciting. And, but as you will see, quite a bit of linear algebra wisdom goes into it. You have to understand polynomials as vectors. You have to be able to think of polynomials as vectors, and that's a skill that we've practiced throughout linear algebra. You have to have an inner product. You have to have Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization, or else you don't have the Legendre polynomials. It's very important to remember that not only are these orthogonal, but that they were created by a Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure. So all of this intelligence, plus an amazing insight by Gauss that goes into the discovering strategy for Gaussian quadrature. So before I talk about Gaussian quadrature and how it's different from the naive ways of evaluating, of approximating integrals numerically. Let me just say a few more words about the Legendre polynomials that we, were, that we introduced last time. So it's very important to remember that we started with this basis. Let's limit ourselves to fourth, up to fourth degree polynomials. When you perform the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure with respect to the standard inner product. So the inner product is important. So when you perform Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure with respect to this inner product, you end up with not quite this set. I'll tell you in a second how it's different. It's only different just by a little bit. So we started with one, the next one was x, so there is a match. But next one was x squared minus one-third. And you see that this one is a multiple of what we discovered. It's six times the polynomial that we discovered. And then we didn't go this far, but if we had gone this far, we would have ended up with x cubed minus three-fifth x. No? Yeah, exactly. Once again, I'm right. And so this is... Uh, so I was not correct. It's not a multiple of six, it's a multiple of three halves. And this would be a multiple of five halves. So these are basically the same polynomials as the one we discovered or would have discovered, except they have a different multiple. You have a choice of multiple. All we need is orthogonal polynomials. We could have gone for orthonormal, make them all unit length with respect to the same inner product. But if you don't go for orthonormal, you have that extra degree of freedom to scale them whatever way you want. And so the way that's commonly chosen, you choose a multiple such that the value of each one of these polynomials at one equals one. So that's how these are different from the ones that we discovered or would have discovered in the last lecture. I'll mention three important things to notice about Legendre polynomials. I forget, sorry, okay. Well, here's, here's the first one. This one's even, the next one's odd, and then the pattern continues. Even, odd, even, and so forth. Do you see how this one has only even terms in it, making it, it even? That's not a coincidence at all, because we started with another basis that had the same property, even, odd, even, odd, even. And when you perform the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure, the even ones are already orthogonal to all of the odd ones that came before it. So when you do that term in the, in the Gram-Schmidt procedure, it equals zero already because the multiple is zero. So it drops out. And so that pattern persists. And why does it drop out? Well, because our interval of integration is symmetric. So odd functions integrate to zero. So that pattern persists. Okay, that's one maybe important thing to notice, maybe not. Here is the most important thing to notice. And you will explain to me why that is. And note how, even though we're talking about polynomials, we're thinking linear algebra. So L4, let's say, 
is orthogonal to each one of these. Am I correct? Of course I am correct. These are orthogonal polynomials. That's what it means to be orthogonal. It's orthogonal to all the other ones. But I will also make the statement that L4 is orthogonal to all polynomials of power less than 4. Think about why that's true. For example, it's orthogonal to x cubed. Well, that's clear, actually, because you would be integrating an odd function over a symmetric period. But what about x squared? So we know that it's orthogonal to this, but how do you also know that it's orthogonal to x squared? Would you like me to explain why? Here is why. Remember that these polynomials came as a result of the Gram-Schmidt procedure applied to these polynomials. And here, let's take a look at the first four. Because they are what they are, they definitely span the, sp the space of all cubic polynomials. Am I right? And if these polynomials space, excuse me, span the space of all cubic polynomials, then these do too. Then these do too. Why? Because they were a linear combination of these. And not just arbitrary linear combinations, easily invertible linear combinations. Legendre polynomials are certain linear combinations of these, and because of that triangular structure, you could easily reverse it and express each one of these as a linear combination of the Legendre polynomials. So the space of cubic polynomials is spanned by these four Legendre polynomials. They're very trivially spanned by these four. But because of how these four were constructed, these four also span the space of cubic polynomials. And I didn't even have to say that. All I had to do is to remark that these are, let, can I say the word, obviously linearly independent? Because each one of them has a little something that the previous ones don't. And there are four of them. And so, if this polynomial is orthogonal to each one of these, then it's orthogonal to any up to third degree polynomial, because any up to third degree polynomial is a linear combination of these. Very simple linear algebra fact, if you really think about it, that not only this polynomial orthogonal to each one of these individually, it's of course orthogonal to the entire span of, this, of these, which is the space of cubic polynomials. So that's a very important fact to keep in mind. And finally, one more fact about these Legendre polynomials that, that we will not prove that figures very prominently in this procedure. So as you know, polynomials, a polynomial of degree n has up to n roots. If you count complex numbers, then it's exactly n. But these have up to n. So this one has up to three roots. This one has at most two. This one at most one. This one at most four. I didn't know why it didn't go in order. Well, it so happens, and by looking at the slide, you can see that not only do they have up to four, they have exactly four, this one. Each one of them has exactly n roots. Look at the wiggles and how many times each of the polynomials crosses the x-axis. Exactly equals the order of the polynomial. And not only that, all of the roots are exactly between minus 1 and 1. They all, they're all right there. It is not very difficult to show, but it's beyond the scope of this class to show. So keep that in mind. 